Hello. I don't think you can hear me because you've been muted, but hi, this is Mark. Um, it's 11, so let's just wait a couple of minutes and let people get in. I think I see Pat and Vincent. Now, this is my first time using Zoom, so I'm going to ask you guys to please help me out. There should be a chat window somewhere on the right in a little pane. Can you like say something or chat something and let me know that you can hear me? Uh, I'm going to try to share my screen. Hello? Hello, this is Mark. Who's this? Uh, hello, Mark. This is Vincent. Hey, Vincent. So you can hear me. Awesome. Absolutely. And let's see. Uh, I'm going to share my main screen. I'm going to hit share. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Oh, beautiful. I like this free stuff. Now let's <laughs> see if I can figure out this. Uh, wait, no, I don't want to do this. I want to see the chat because I know people are going to ask questions. Where is the chat? Oh, there it is. So let me move it over here on my other screen. And okay, that's annoying. Move that over there. Okay, my outline is over here because I don't want to wing it. I don't want to mess up the first time. And all right let's just hang out for a minute or two and see who decides to show up oh wait I got my buddy Arlene is there. I don't know if you can speak Arlene, but I just let you in. All right, so uh, let's just get some housekeeping out of the way. Oh, now they're starting to get in there. Okay, so I want to get some housekeeping out of the way. Um, we are just going to talk about this little area in Excel, which actually has a ton of stuff. So I hope we can cover everything. As I started to delve into it, I remembered, oh my gosh, I haven't done that in ages and so on and so forth. So. I'm going to go kind of fast because there's a lot of stuff I want to teach you guys, but I'm going to try to share this file through the chat. So if you want, you can follow along. If not, when I put this up on YouTube, you can follow along later. It's completely up to you. So I'm going to see if I go into share file in meeting, I go into this PC. Nope. All right, where is this file? Is it my desktop? Give me a second. Give me a second. I'll get there. All right, so if you open up the chat window, I finally found it. There should be that webinar underscore one, and it's just this exact same file. So you can follow along now or later on whenever you feel uh, productive. You want to do that. Okay. Uh, let me admit some more people. So it is, okay, 11.04. I got 40 minutes. Let's get started and let's have some fun. Um, okay, thank you for taking time out of your Saturday to hang out with me for 40 minutes. 
I really do appreciate it. And I don't know why this window is here. Give me a second. I'm moving windows around like crazy now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am recovering from a bad cold. So you're going to have to excuse any coughing or any, you know, nose blowing. But I'm, I just wanted to keep at least the original date because I already sent out the invite. A um, little bit more housekeeping. So this is the free Zoom. I got 40 minutes and I have a maximum of 100 attendees. I think we'll be fine with that. I'm going to cover as much as possible. If you guys have questions, I have the chat window open. Go ahead and just ask whatever you want and I'll try to get to it. The first thing I want to say is the Excel that you're looking at on my screen may look a little bit different than yours. The icons may be a little bit different because I'm on Office 365 and I'm on the Insider channel. What that means is I have the latest and greatest bleeding edge stuff that Microsoft is testing. So every couple of days, my Excel changes. So the buttons will be the same, but the icons may be different. Don't freak out about that. This area, however, which is the one that we'll be covering, will absolutely be the same, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, this is what I used to tell people when I used to teach Excel as a consultant. Just relax. You're not wasting your time. We're going to have fun. I'm going to, there's no test. There's no attendance. And I promise you're going to learn a lot of cool stuff today. Okay. This is basically meant for the beginners or intermediate users. I am going to go ahead and do some kind of advanced intermediate stuff at the end, but I'll go step by step so that you don't need to have like a PhD in math to do anything, but it is going to look like magic when you're done. Conceptually speaking, the way that I teach Excel, the way that I think of Excel, is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, where I take different areas or different features of Excel and I combine them so that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Each individual piece is pretty simple. But when you put them together, you're like, oh, wait, what just happened? So to give you one of my dumb analogies, you know, you can have eggs, you can have sugar, you can have flour, and yeah, that's great, but you mix them all together and then boom, you have a cake. So that's kind of how I see Excel. So let's get started. Um, I'm so excited about this. So let's see. First thing that I'm going to show you is the quick access toolbar. It's called QAT. And what that is, is it's this area right up here. It's the only area that you have actually the toolbar or the buttons that you had in Excel 2003. You only have this now, this toolbar in 2007 and later. This whole area that you see here is called the ribbon. So that's new, that was the big change in 2007. So this QAT, you can actually alter pretty easily. If you click on this little button, you can actually add different buttons to here so that it will always be available to you. Pretty easy. Um, I always like to do the save as and the save and especially the new. Because if you don't have the new button, you basically have to go to file, new, then hit new and that's three clicks. But here if you just click this button, you have the new file just opens up. So let me close that guy up. And let me show you some other magic that you can do. You click on that little button, you go down to the bottom, and you go to more commands. Now here is where you can get really, really cool stuff. First of all, Microsoft has decided to let us know what are the popular commands. I don't know if you remember, but I'll probably, uh, probably in every version of Excel, sometimes when you do something, Microsoft or Excel will give you a little prompt that says, hey, do you want to participate in the customer experience program? And this will help us improve Excel. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Well, what they were doing is they were actually recording all of the clicks and all of the uses that people made in Excel. And then that became the actual popular commands. That doesn't mean it was the best way because you're kind of sinking to the lowest common denominator, right? You know, be beware the tyranny of the majority. You don't want to do the most inefficient way because that's just what everybody does. But you know what? I don't work for Microsoft. I just play the game. 
So these are the popular commands. You can add all of these commands, well not all of them, but add the ones that you want to the quick access toolbar. When you do this, this will be on your instance of Excel. It is not on one file. You can set it up for one file, but it's actually for your instance of Excel, which means you just have to do it once. One minor benefit, or actually it's minor, but for me it was major, is that as of 2003 after, they actually put this in alphabetical order. Before it was not, and it was a nightmare to find stuff. Okay, popular commands. I went off on a tangent. Sorry about that. Um, you can add any of these buttons to that toolbar. You can do commands not in the ribbon. All the commands, if you're into macros, go ahead. You can even start to go into the home tab or the insert tab. So this is completely customizable. If you want to add something, basically I'll just do all commands. You can, uh, all commands takes a little bit of time because it's doing literally all the commands in Excel. So you basically would select something, hit add, it will show up over here, and then you can just move it up and down. This little area up here is what I was saying. You can do it for all documents or just for this file. I don't see the point of doing it for one file versus all documents. I always do it for all documents, but there may be one corner case where you want just one button for one document. This is where you set that up. Once you select this, this modify will be grayed out unless you're doing something custom for a macro. If you always have a macro and you always want to run it from a button up here, that's when you would modify it and you would actually select the macro to run. If you completely mess up and you don't know what to do, you can actually reset it and just delete the customizations and go back to basics, okay? You can actually also import and export. So if you want to save it, do some disaster recovery, send it to somebody else, you can actually do that. You can show the toolbar below the ribbon. I had one client that did that, drove me crazy, because what that does, it doesn't break anything, but once you're used to things, it kind of makes it annoying, for me at least, because now it's down here, and I always go up here. And then it's like, oh, he put it down there. So that's all that does. You can also change that up here. Show above the ribbon. So far, so good. Okay, quick access toolbar, not a big deal. Now, we are going to, hold on, I got somebody who just uh, arrived, okay. So now, let's go ahead and talk about the meat of this webinar, which is all the commands that you have here in the clipboard. You would think that copy paste would be pretty easy, but there's a lot of magic that goes on here, and a lot of things that can make your life a lot easier. So let's see, where would I start? Number one, I'm right clicking, I'm clicking, I'm just clicking on copy. Not a big deal. Now this paste, every button in Excel, where you see that little arrow, that means that there are additional options. So you can just paste. I could just, you know, click here and click on paste or click on control V, which is the shortcut for paste or I could click on that and, and see all of these different options. We're gonna go through every one of these options. Believe it or not, this changes based on what you copy. Watch this trick that I am going to show you. I am going to launch my notepad editor, and I am going to type in some invoice numbers. So I'll do 0, 100, comma, 0, 200, comma, 0, 300. I'm going to go ahead and copy this from here. Now, this is Notepad++, a completely different program. Now, I go back to Excel. Now, when I paste it, this changed. I could paste values, and it will keep just the text. But let me make this a little bit wider so you can see the preview of what would happen if I did that. It would just, uh, did I mess up those numbers? Oh, I messed up those numbers, didn't I? Give me a second. 
No, I didn't. Okay. So that would just keep the text. But now I have this text import wizard. So let's go through that if you haven't ever used this. This is a little wizard that's been in Excel forever that lets you treat data specifically when you copy it from another program or from a CSV file. So I'm going to click on the Use Text Import Wizard. This shows up, and it has like five steps. So let's go through it. We're going to start the import at row one. Well, if it was a large file and it had headers, maybe we wanted to start on row two or three. But here's the preview. Row one is the only thing that we have, and my data doesn't have headers. So we're going to keep it this way. Now, this delimited and fixed width is important depending on where you're copying stuff from. Delimited means that there is a character that will signify the start of another column. It can be a comma, it could be a dash, it could be a colon, a semicolon, it doesn't really matter, but that's how the different fields will be separated in different systems. Fixed width is how the old systems, the old mainframes, used to have their fields in that there was no comma. It was just 15 characters and you're done. So Excel can handle both of these. In this particular case, I want delimited because I have a comma. So I'm going to click on next. Now here, remember we just talked about, uh, ah, blah, blah, sorry about that. We just talked about delimited. Well, what is the delimiter? Now you have to tell Excel, okay, which field or which character defines the new column? Notice here's a preview. Well, it's not a space, but it is a comma. And now, you see the preview, it's going to split this into three different fields. You can treat consecutive delimiters as one. So if I have two commas, it'll just ignore them. If you have an underscore or something of that, to that effect that will split them, you click on other and you type it in here. Notice how you can have more than one delimiter in the same file. So that is pretty cool. Now, the one thing you have to be careful with on different systems with commas is if you're importing names or different freeform fields from salesforce.com or any other database, like a company name, and it's called, suppose a company name is called, you know, uh, Mark Moore, comma, Inc. Well, that comma ink shouldn't be a different field. There, you have to start to get more creative on how you do this. But that's just one of the caveats on commas when you have names and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on next. Most people, they just hit finish and you're actually going to be done. But I did this very specifically to show you how you can save yourself a lot of headaches. Notice how these numbers have a leading zero. If I click on finish, right, because next is grayed out. If I click on finish, Excel will say, oh, this is general. This is a number. And it'll make this 100, 200, and 300 instead of the zero 100. If you want to keep the zeros or any leading zeros, you highlight with shift, ah, and you make it text. You can also, you know, skip them, but you keep it as text. And now when you hit finish, it will paste it as text and you keep the leading zeros. I know that drives people crazy, but that's how you solve that problem. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So we have done copy text from another file into Excel and using the text import wizard. Now next, what I'm going to do is go into all of the other different types of copy paste special, but you'll see a lot of them are pretty self-explanatory. So I'll just spend time on the more interesting ones. So in order to see all of that, I need to copy something. So I'm just going to copy that. And now let's just go through them and look at the more interesting ones. So the first one, basically, it's paste. Now notice how there's a P within those parentheses. If I just press P right now, that's when it'll, it'll do the paste. So that's your shortcut. Excel actually tells you what to do. So next would be formulas. 
if I just wanted to paste the formulas, now you started to get into the different mix. If I want the formulas and the number formatting, you would do that. If I just wanted to keep the source formatting, no borders, pretty easy. Keep source column widths, and then transpose. Now transpose gets kind of cool. Let's look at what transpose does. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we're gonna go to transpose, and this is the next sheet. I just wanted to show you this transpose. So what we're gonna do is transpose basically takes columns to rows and rows to columns. So it's how to flip it. Highlight this area right now. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna copy. I'm just gonna come over right here, go to paste and go to our transpose and notice what it did. It put the departments and the months, right? Because this first one goes over to the columns and then the sales operation comes over here. All the numbers should tie. Let's see, IT for June was 43,000 and IT for June was 42. So it seemed to work. But down here at the bottom, I have the formulas that are copied. I did not copy the formulas. I'm gonna do it again to show you that the formulas also transpose. So I'm just gonna go ahead and undo. I'm gonna highlight with the formulas. Copy that bad boy here. Uh, you can right click and it transposes also right there. So now we've pasted it, it's transposed. It took the formats, okay, we have to clean it up. But notice how here, I'm going from H5 to H13, I'm summing up this column. Well, Excel was smart enough to change it, so it does from K to S. That's pretty cool. But Excel is actually a little bit smarter than you give it credit for. So I am going to erase this and I'll show you that it works on multiple levels of nesting. So right here, I'm gonna highlight this area. I'm gonna type in Q1, but I'm gonna be intelligently lazy. I don't wanna type in Q1 three times. So the trick is you type in Q1, and now instead of pressing enter, you press control enter, and it enters everything in the area that's been highlighted. I'm gonna do the same thing here for Q2. So I'm typing in Q2, and I do control enter. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight this including the quarters. Copy it over here, right click, I'm gonna transpose it, and it even did the quarters. So you can have multiple headers and nestings and it will actually work. So that's actually very, very convenient. In this version of Excel, and by this version, I mean the version that I'm using, there are these new array formulas that will do this with a formula instead of with copy paste. So why does that matter? It matters in that if you get this from a system on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis, you're gonna have to do this every single time. It's not automated. You could record a macro, okay, that's fine. But if you do this with those new array formulas, that means it'll work automatically. All you have to do is you know, calculate and boom, it's, it's done. So it's less manual work. And I'm always a proponent to do less manual work because every time you touch the data is the opportunity to introduce error. So what you want is a process, you wanna audit the process and then just don't touch it. Let the data flow through. Okay, let's see, so I'm at 1124, and we have 1140, okay, oh my gosh, I have to speed up just a little bit, because I, I do wanna show you a bunch of cool stuff. Um, okay, so I have this copy is still here. We talked about all of these, so paste values, just paste the values, that sort of formulas, that sort of formatting. Paste values and number formatting, pretty obvious. Values and source formatting, and let's see. Paste just the formats, so if you don't wanna format something over and over again, you can just format that. Paste link. Paste link is very cool. 
paste link basically means I need to link this area. So you could, for example, let me clean this up just a little bit. This is what paste link does. Suppose I needed to mirror this because I'm going to play with it. <coughs> Excuse me. Most people, and this is not bad, but you would do this, right? You'd go equals department, and then you drag it down, and then you drag it across, and then you do the formatting. Hey, not a big deal. But you don't have to do all of that work. You can just copy this, come over here, paste the link. It does it for you. C5. It's pointing to C5, D5. So that is how that works for the paste links. Let me clean this up one more time. Uh, I need to copy something so I can show you all that stuff. Let's see, where are we? We are paste as picture. So if you want to put this into PowerPoint, you want to put this someplace else, you can actually just copy this once it's nice and pretty. You copy this and you can paste it as a picture. Now this is a transparent picture that you can resize and you can put it into PowerPoint, put it into Word. You don't have the link, which basically means if you change the data here, it ain't gonna change this sucker, that guy's static. But you actually have the image and it's a quick way to populate your presentations. And copy. Paste. Okay, linked picture. That's the cool one, but that's in camera. And I'm going to get to it in a couple of sheets. There's still a couple of things I want to go through on Paste Special because these are not all of the options. These are most of the options, like those popular commands. But really, if you're going to Paste Special, these are all the good stuff. Okay. Most of them we've already covered in these past couple of minutes. We've done the formulas, paste all. So paste all is this dude right there, paste all. I'm going to go to paste special. Paste formulas was this guy. Nope, that guy. Paste. So they're all kind of there, even though this area has some that don't exist in the other area, and the other area has some that don't exist in this area. You just kind of get, have to get used to that. Values, formats, comments. You can actually paste your comments, paste your data validation. If you don't know what a data validation is, we'll get to it in a little bit. All using source theme, all, you can do all the stuff. Now here is where it gets really interesting, where I can actually paste and do some math. I can add, subtract, multiply, or divide. We already did transpose and we did link. So let's do really quickly what this does and this I use a lot so for example let's suppose that you get a request from your VP and the VP says you know what I want sales to be zero for me so a lot of people will come over here and you would delete the number and now you have the new number of sales that's zero right I don't want to do that the reason I don't want to do that is because you lose the data so what I like to do is, even though this is a value, I put an equal sign and I multiply it by zero. So now I still know that it used to be 40,709, but I've just multiplied it by zero. So when I have to undo it a day or an hour later, I just take this out and I don't have to make it a number, but I need to do it for the purpose of this example and the number's still there. So I hate deleting data, okay? But if I have 300 rows or 500 rows, I'm not going to sit there and go times zero, times zero, times zero. That's where Paste Special comes in. So this is my trick. You go equal in another cell, any cell that's empty. <clears throat> Excuse me. You go equals zero. Make it a formula, even though it's just a number, right? Now you copy it. I'm just going to select these two guys, sales and operations. I'm going to right click, paste special, formulas multiply. Move this out of the way. See, I got 4709. 
we have removed the 40 minute time limit on your first group meeting. Good. Uh, all right. That's a nice little. Wow. I'm kind of happy about that. Okay, cool. Um, okay. Wow. That's pretty good. So formulas multiply. Now when I hit OK, look what happens. It actually multiplied it times my zero. So now if I have 200 or 300 rows, it's really easy to do. But here's the bad part. If I wanted to undo it, it's not an easy way to undo it. I can't multiply by one. I could do a find or place, but it gets pretty tricky. So if you're going to go back and forth, I'm going to show you a trick on the trick. All right? So let me undo this. Uh, let me get rid of this. Uh, let me know in the chat. Am I doing okay? Is this making sense? Am I going too fast? Are you bored? While I do this, just chat and just let me know. Okay. So I have equals zero, right? Because this is what I want to multiply it by. Sometimes. I might have to bring it back. Sometimes I may want to keep it. Okay, so here's the trick. I want to multiply all of these by this. So what I'm going to do is I have to come over to another cell just as a temporary thing. I'm going to put equals J2 and the other trick, I'm going to press F4. F4 in the formula bar puts the dollar signs. If you're not familiar with what those dollar signs do, they basically are an S for sticky, which means you always stay on J2 no matter where you cut or copy. Always. So now that I have the dollar sign in front of the J, dollar sign in front of the 2, I'm going to stay there. Now I'm going to go ahead and enter that. I'm not going to copy the zero. I'm going to copy this equals J2. Now I copy it. I select this. I right click. I do my paste special. Formulas multiply. Now I have multiplied everything times J2. So now I have my quick little what if scenario. And now, all of a sudden, you know how VPs are and directors are. They, they're so finicky. They're going to say, oh, no, you know what? I don't want that anymore. Put it back. Fine. You just put a 1. So you're either multiplying by 0 or multiplying by 1. That's the easy on off. But then at least my directors have been like, yeah, well, what about if we had a medium scenario where everything went down by 50%. You just put 0 0.5. So this is a quick and dirty what if scenario. Now this guy that's pointed to J2, you can get rid of it. This is the driver that gets multiplied by. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, my best practice for me and my sanity and for all of the people who I work with I like to take my driver cells and I highlight them in whatever color I want, but I just shade them and I let people know only change the shaded cells. Okay? So that is a paste special multiply. You can also paste special divide. Paste special divide would work. It's the same concept. I'm not going to go through it because I think we have mastered the four mathematical operations at this stage of our lives. But if I wanted to show everything in thousands, I wouldn't multiply by J2. I would pay special divide by 1,000. And then this would be 20, 21, 10, 17, and so on and so forth. So you can do that. So if you want to see everything in thousands, you just pay uh, special divide. Okay, skip blanks. So what is skip blanks? I'm going to copy and I'm going to show you where it is. This guy right here, nobody ever uses it. And it does have a very specific use. And I'm going to the skip blanks area here. So I have the destination. This is the data 
that I need that I'm going to present. But I have been asked to change sales to 50, change finance to 18, 42, 32, 13. Granted, I could just type this in. But if I had, you know, several thousand changes, or if I had to do this change for a thousand cost centers, the volume of data is prohibitive. And that's where pay special skip planks is really good because what it will do, I will it will take this area, paste it over here, and not overwrite the ones that are blank. This is what I mean by that. If I copy this guy right there. And I just do a normal paste. You know what's going to happen, right? It's going to paste it. It's going to overwrite it. And I was like, well, what the hell was operations? So I'm going to go ahead and undo it. I'm going to do Control Z, as in zebra. It's back. So what I'm going to do, well, I don't have to copy it anymore because I still have that little marquee. I'm going to highlight this, right? Watch. I'm going to go right click, paste special. I'm going to skip blanks. What it's going to do, it will paste only the values in the destination and not change whatever was blank. So that may help you in that very specific instance. Okay, so that was skip blanks. Now we're talking, oh, well, actually, I already did multiply. So we already just spent a lot of time on multiply, so we can skip this one. Now we're going to go into the camera tool. This is awesome. This is going to go probably into advanced intermediate. But don't worry, we're going to go step by step. And like I said, I'm going to record it and you can practice this. There is a lesson that I have in the ebooks called Mastering Excel Building Dashboards, where I go really deep into this. But if you can master this for your dashboards, you will be known as the Excel guru. It is absolutely I you know jaw dropping when people see this and it's like the whole jigsaw puzzle thing where I said you know every little piece is really simple you put them together and you get that cake people are gonna be like amazing okay so first of all what on earth is the camera tool I have it up here because I added it in my QAT so I went over here I did more commands I found the camera tool and I put it up there Camera tool was hidden from Excel for ages. But now Microsoft actually got smart and they're not hiding it. It is actually also called a linked picture. So the camera tool and the linked picture are the same thing. Okay, what's the big deal? What does it do? Watch. The first basic use is I click on copy. And I, I'm just going to select over here, and I'm going to go ahead and do a linked picture. It is almost like what we did before. <coughs> oh, excuse me. It's almost like what we did before when um, we copied the picture, right? But this is linked to the data. Let me show you how cool that is. If I come over here and I highlight this, this gets highlighted also. Because I'm going to click on this sucker. Look at the source. It's B2 to C11. So it is actually reading. It is kind of like a bird's eye view on this area. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to undo that. Uh, what did I undo? Oh, uh, I just want the format. Okay. So anything that you do here will be linked over here. But the benefit for dashboarding and for reporting is that this guy is not constrained by the columns and the row heights and the column widths, meaning I can do this without having to mess with my original data, okay? So that's, that's pretty good. Of course, you can put this on a different spreadsheet, but now notice how it floats on top of the columns. So I can position it wherever I want, and then I can put a chart here. I can put a text box here. You can do whatever type of dashboarding that you want. That's the basic use of camera tool or the linked picture. That should give you some bonus points at the office. But now what I'm going to show you, there are a lot of steps here. Each step is simple. 
But when you're done, it's going to be awesome. Okay, I'm probably going to go through a lot of concepts you may not quite get. But once you do this two or three times, you're going to get it. Trust me. And if you don't get it, you send me an email and I'll answer it. Okay. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this guy because I was just for the example. I'm going to take a linked picture of two areas. I'm going to select this area. You don't need to do the shading, but for instruction purposes, it makes it a lot easier. I'm going to make this one red, and I'm going to take another area, and I'm going to make this one green. Okay? Now, I'm going to name this area. So I'm going to highlight this area. In this name box over here, I'm going to call it red, R-E-D, and I press enter. Now, I have assigned a, a, a user-friendly name to the areas of G3 to J12, and I called it red. You can call it sales. You can call it whatever you want, but I just called it red to keep it easy to understand. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to highlight this guy, and I'm going to call it green, and I press enter. Now I have red, and I have green. Yeah, okay, so what? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a linked picture of any area. It could be red, it could be green, but I'm just going to do red. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to take this linked picture, and it's over here. So this is a window, like a bird's eye view, of red. And it's still linked. So if I put uh, hello, it shows hello. Okay? And it, this is going to be weird, but it's really as if you're looking at it from a bird's eye view. And what do I mean by that? Because if I do, let me just insert uh, ah, like a little smiley face. Watch. If I just move it up here, it also shows up here. So it's really looking down on it. Okay? But I can move it as a unit. All right. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to set up a data validation, which is a list that users can select red, this name, or green. So I'm going to, over here off to the side, I'm going to type in red. I'm going to type in green. And then I'm going to have an input cell. I'm going to highlight it. And now I have to, I'm going to go away from clipboard, and I have to go into data, and I have to go into data validation. And right now, the standard of Excel basically means you can type in any number anywhere that you want. I don't want that. I want only a list of predefined values. The list of predefined values will be right here, red or green. I don't want anybody to choose anything else. So there's red and there's green. Okay, so far so good. Now I am going to use a new formula you probably have never used called indirect. Indirect is a formula that will read text and pretend that it is part of the formula. I know that didn't make sense, but watch. I'm going to type in B2. B2 is a sentence. It's text. It's not a formula. I didn't start it with the equal sign. But if I go equals indirect, that cell, S6, and I close a parenthesis, I press enter, it gives me department because that's what's in B2. And if I change this to B3, it will give me sales. So it's kind of like an arm's length relationship from the actual value, okay? So I'm going to use this to hack into Excel. And I'm going to use this linked picture to either look at red or either look at green using indirect, okay? I know it won't make sense. But just work with me. When we're done, you'll get it. I'm going to use the second way to create a named range. 
and I can't do, since I'm going to do this crazy stuff with indirect, I can't do it up here in the name box. So I have to go to formulas. I go to name manager. There's my green and there's my red. I want a new one. And I'm going to call it my data source. No spaces allowed. What is going to be my data source? What's it going to refer to? It's not going to refer to a cell. The hack is that this friendly name can actually be a formula. So I'm going to do equals indirect S1, close parentheses. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's think about what's going to happen, because now I have daisy chained a couple of very simple concepts together. I have a name that is called my data source. It is going to look at S1, see the word green, interpret it as green, not the text, but as green, the named range. Right? So it, it's daisy chaining everything. Now I hit OK. There's my data source, and I hit close. It doesn't look like anything has happened. But watch. Instead of going from G3 to J12, because I have hard-coded it, that's, that's, that's too beginner. I want to do my data source, the one that I just created. And now it's green because it's looking at green. And now when I change this to red, it's looking at red. So what's happening is this is now a user-friendly name, and this is now a user-friendly name. The magic is this my data source is using a formula that interprets this word as the range. OK, cool. How does this help? Why did you just waste 10 minutes of my life? Because now when you build a dashboard, watch this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert a, let's do a pie chart. I'm going to do a little pie chart. I'm just going to resize it. No, no, that's not what I wanted. No, no, no. OK, let's resize the pie chart. You resize the pie chart right over the red. Notice how now it shows up here, right? Granted, you know, you have to play with it and make it look pretty, but you, you get where I'm going. Now I'm going to create another chart. Or actually, I can just copy this one. All right, so I'm going to copy this chart, put it over here. But I don't want a pie chart. Let's make it, uh, where is change chart type? Uh, let's make a column chart, a nice column chart. Now I can take this column chart and move it over here. You know, you have to position it clearly and whatever. But you don't really need those colors. Remember the red? You can just delete the colors. All you need is the range, but it's easier to keep a handle on it. But now what happens? If I want red, I can see this pie chart. But when I want green, I can see this. So it looks like you wrote some really complicated macro that lets the users switch whatever chart that they want. But you've done nothing of the sort. You're basically kind of like in a house looking at the window out the front door at the beach, and then you're out and you go to the house and look at the window at the back door at the mountain. You're in the same house. You're just looking at a different area. So if you can figure out this and you can replicate it and put it in your dashboards, it's going to be amazing because now you are letting your users have a certain degree of autonomy for their dashboards. So one dashboard in this particular case can serve two different users. The one guy that wants the pie chart and the other girl that wants the column. You don't have to do the work. Let Excel do the hard work for you. I hope that made sense. There is a 
lesson called, I said, I think I said this before, called building dashboards that goes really deep into this, but this is basically what it does. You can choose, of course, you wouldn't choose red and green. You would choose column chart or, you know, sales, op, performance, or whatever. The words are irrelevant, but it's just the names ranges, okay? Okay, a couple little things. Oh, I am so glad that they extended my time because look at me already rambling and we're already at 50 minutes. Okay, um, I'm going to go to auto filter. You would think this has nothing to do with copy paste, but it actually does. So auto filter is, excuse me. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Okay, so auto filter. What is auto filter? Auto filter are these little drop downs that you have here where you can select to interactively hide data. So how you do the auto filter is you click on, uh, well, it's on. So this is normal data in a database where you have headers and you have data. The database will end at the first empty column and at the first completely empty row. That is the def definition of a database. If you do something like this, because you want headers or whatnot, now you have two databases. That's just how Excel works. You need to have it contiguous. You can have an empty cell. That's okay. That's fine. But the first completely empty row or column, that's the definition of a database. So what you do is you click anywhere in here, you click on filter, and now if I only wanted to see, let's say, sales, you can click on IT or sales. And it hides all of the other cells. So it's a quick way to filter the data. What does this have to do with copy-paste? Couple of things. There are two ways to copy in Excel. Let's suppose that I wanted to filter just for operations. I, I can right click and I can come over here and go into search. I am right clicking trying to paste. I cannot because Excel doesn't quite want me to do that. But you know what? I want to do it anyways. If that's the case, you press Control V as in Victor. And now you can paste where you quote unquote aren't supposed to. So that's hack number one. So now I click OK. I've only seen my operations, right? Now for this, it's pretty easy to undo the auto filter because I can just click on this and do select all. But if you had 30, 300, or 400 rows, you wouldn't want to click over and over, undo, undo, undo. What you would do is you'd hit on clear. Clear kind of shows everything, right? But I lost the operations because I copied it from the cell. When you copy something, like if I copy this here, I'm just going to highlight this, and I'm going to press Control C. This is an Excel memory. So as soon as I hit clear, it will go away. As soon as I hit escape, it will go away, okay? But there's a second way to copy. If I click on operations and I copy it from here, from the formula bar, if I click and I highlight it and I right click and I copy, this is now in the Windows memory, not in Excel's memory. So I can right click and I can paste it. I'm pressing escape like 500 times and I can right click, I can still paste it because Windows trumps Excel. So how can we use this? Well, I'm coming over here. I can do control V because it's in Windows memory. I hit OK. Now I hit clear because I want to show everything. Oh, but I want to go back to operations. I can still do control V because Windows trumps Excel. So sometimes if you don't want to lose what you copied, you can copy it from the formula bar and use Windows, okay? Last thing that I wanted to show you was back in home, there's a, uh, two little things. Oh man, I keep on adding stuff. So this is called the clipboard. Why is it called the clipboard? I've talked about cut, copy, paste. I haven't talked about format painter, but that's literally a, a, a two minute discussion. Because if you click on that little button right there, 
at the corner, you get the history of everything that you have copied in Excel. So Excel will keep it. So you don't have to copy the same thing over and over again. You can click on item to paste. You can go to options. You can show it automatically or not show it automatically. You can clear it. So you can do a bunch of cool stuff here. You can move this around. But that's why it's called the clipboard because there is this hidden history here. Right? You can paste it. You can delete it. So that is your, uh, that's why it's called the clipboard. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close it. But notice how every little group has that little button. Well, not styles, but most groups have the button, and that's when you want to get into more settings, which we'll go into in another webinar. Okay. Last thing is Format Painter. If there are a bunch of formats that I want to apply, and I don't want to do them every single time, so I'm going to go back to Start, and I'm going to select, okay, this is, this is cool. This has a bunch of formats, right? But let me add some more formats. I'll make this red, and I'll make this italic. It's, it's ugly, but hey, it's just a format. So if I click on this Format Painter, and I click on one cell, it will apply all those formats, the shading, the italic, and the red. So I just saved myself three clicks. But I lose it. It only works one at a time. But the trick is, if you click on this cell and you double click on the Format Painter, notice how now I have that little paintbrush? Now it stays. So I can do it as many times as I want. So that is click is single use, double click is multiple use, okay? Oh boy, I haven't coughed that much. Okay, I'm pressing escape. I think I have covered everything that I intended to. So just give me one minute and I gotta do a plug. So I'll just plug this over here. If you are interested in learning more about Excel macros or formulas, I do have this class. It's on mastering-excel.teachable.com. It's 99 bucks. I know it's more expensive than the eBooks that are at five bucks or six bucks, but this is, I think, Excel formulas is something like nine hours of me teaching you all cool stuff about formulas. And this is something also like eight hours of me teaching you about macros. You can, I'm always on the school, so you can ask me questions and whatnot. So if you're interested, you can go to, go to mastering-excel.teachable.com. Let me put it here in the chat window if you guys are interested. Excuse me. That is my online school. So I'm going to add more stuff. The next one I'm going to add is on Power Query which is how to import data into Excel and do some very cool stuff so that it's kind of like this own macro language. So that's coming up. And of course, you have all my Mastering Excel on Amazon, which you've probably bought. But go ahead and do a search because I think I have something like eight or nine of them that are free and nobody's downloading them. So for example, I know if you do a search for Mastering Excel, Spreadsheet Inquire, that one's free. And if you do a search for Mastering Excel font images, that one is also free. So go ahead, download them. It shows you a bunch of little tricks and stuff that I'm sharing with you. And if you want to pay $3.99 or $4.99 for, for some of the other lessons, I'm not going to be complaining. Um, okay, eleven fifty eight. Wow. So. I was supposed to have 40 minutes, but I have an hour. Um, I want 11.59. Do we have any questions? When will your Power Query class be available? I have a Power Query lesson, but it's kind of high level. It takes me about four or five days to do the online class because I have to record, I have to, you know, it's different than just typing. So, oh man, give me, give me like two or three weeks and, and I'll get it done. And then I'll send out the list. Okay. There is a difference 
between Power Query and Power Pivot because I see that somebody asked about the difference. Let me explain to you the difference. Power Query is something called an ETL tool. Extract, suck in the data, transform, mess with the data, and load, put it into Excel. That's one thing that you can do. That's Power Query. Power Pivot takes that data and puts it in tables, like a database, where you can add relationships and aggregate calculations. So it's a little bit different. They're both valid. You know, they're both good programs, but I will say I am in love with Power Query. That is just awesome. I used to be a consultant for a program called TM1, which is an IBM database. And one of the things I loved about TM1 is that it had its own tool to do ETL. And I got really, really good at it. I just love dealing with massive amounts of data. And Power Query is almost the same thing. So I really love that too. I am going to have a Power Pivot class later on, but not yet. I'm going to do the Power Query first. So I've been rambling. The short answer is give me like two or three weeks and I'll get you probably like eight or 10 hours of good Power Query exercises. And I'll send it out to the list and I'll let everybody know. Um, questions, comments, cheap shots, because I think we're pretty much done and I don't want to waste any more of your Saturday. Okay, somebody says good information. Awesome. Okay, all right. That's it. Let's end it. I hope you enjoyed the first webinar. I'm going to do the Power Query, and probably in a few weeks, I'll do the next webinar that will be on another section of Excel. All right. Have a nice weekend, guys and gals.